Hello, everyone. So I'm one of the legal advisors of Wikileaks. I'm a lawyer, PhD in law, and for a year I coordinated the legal team of uh, who defends Wikileaks. So it was directed by a Spanish judge who's very known for his work on human rights, Baltasar Garzón. He was the one who triggered the arrest of Pinochet, the famous Chilean dictator in, in London, thanks to universal competence. And we were a band of 80 lawyers from all over the world, including people, I guess, one of the most uh, important experts in their areas. Uh, we had uh, Amal Clooney, we had uh, Balthazar Garthon, we had uh, very famous Swedish lawyers also. And we tried to work on all the different aspects of uh, Wikileaks activities and Julian Assange's ones and all the legal challenges that they faced. Interestingly enough, Wikileaks hasn't been confronted to many uh, legal claims, especially from private companies, compared to the activities it, ha it has had. It faces huge legal risks and uh, huge uh, problems in terms of, uh, of even capacity to act and develop as a normal organization, that's for sure. But these ones come from a very limited, uh, from very limited areas and actors, uh, especially in the United States. For example, we were talking about the Sony leaks. Uh, WikiLeaks took these leaks, which were not published by, uh, by the organization first, and, but then decided to put it on the website in a searchable way in order to make it uh, accessible to everyone because the, the leaks had been initially posted in, in compressed files uh, just on torrents without any, which limited a lot its access. And there were no legal threats afterwards. And, and we, I could go on with like that for a lot of, uh, a <laughs> lot of actions that WikiLeaks took. So I'm, I'm very interested by these questions because I wonder why, actually, what pre, uh, brings even state actors like Saudi Arabia not to try to, to go further in their uh, in tentative to repress WikiLeaks. I think there is a huge symbolic uh, cost at doing so, uh, especially when, when, when you know that the information that has been pub published is true and, and has a public value. So Julian Assange told me once um, that he felt he was he was uh, stuck in a theater stage, and it's an interesting fact. Uh, Julian Assange has been stuck in in uh, an embassy ne in London, in the Ecuadorian embassy next to Harrods, in 20 square meters for uh, five years now, uh, uh, and hasn't been able to see the sun or go outside for all this time, except two or three very symbolic times in which we saw him, for example, with Noam Chomsky at the balcony of his ground floor. Uh, and he said that he was stuck, like he felt like stuck in a theater stage in which he would be just at the center of the stage and he would see everyone go back and forth and keep on with their lives and come and visit him from time to time and he wouldn't be able to to make a movement and who would only be like able to watch them. So it's kind of a reversed and paradoxic, paradoxical situation in which the actor is completely paralyzed and sees the spectators uh, go uh, away and come back and he just stays in his role and able to come back to his normal life and be able at some point to resume a private individual life. Working with WikiLeaks has been kind of a very strong and difficult experience, even though if as a lawyer and I was not implicated in the activities of the organization per se, and I was protected by my status. I started very young at 22, uh, 23, I, I was going to be 23. And I felt suddenly exposed in a very strange way. I met Julian Assange for the first time, I think it was 10 January 2014. And uh, the day after, I was going back to the United States where I was teaching at, at Yale University, at the French department. And uh, I suddenly got uh, sent to the second screening, secondary screening, for, and was, made wait, was left waiting there for hours and hours without any question or a reaction or whatsoever and then when i came back home i realized that all my electronic equipments had been searched so just the simple fact that i went into this embassy i got into the embassy it made me identified by the u.s services secret services i don't know how i don't know with which method i had had no contact with him or his teams before but yeah 24 hours after I was uh, warned that I, I had been exposed and uh, that I would be starting there, surveilled. Um, the stakes are not low. Of course, the stakes are not low because um, 
when you're a young person which has not yet developed his political career, and when you know what has happened to the people you're, you're going to work with, when you know that five people at least are in the grand jury proceedings in the US, when you know that there has been a lot of disruptive actions, including uh, tentatives by the FBI to penetrate, penetrate the organization, which worked for more than a year with a, an informer that was uh, only discovered when he tried to steal money from the from the organization and therefore their investigation happened and they discovered that he had been going back and forth to Iceland where where he had meetings with the FBI this is like a covert story it's not just a, it's been covered by the media so it's it's all public when you are working with people who are being threatened every day when you're working with someone Julian Assange who's been stuck in this embassy for five years because he's theoretically suspected of uh, sexual violences uh, but has not been charged in all this time, although he has fully cooperated with your uh, institutions in question, the prosecution of of, uh, of this country. And, and when you discover, for example, that as a reaction to my invitation here in two days, it has just been announced a half an hour ago, a press conference by the prosecution, by the pro prosecutor of, of, uh, of this country again, in order to announce something about the case, when it has been five years, it has not announced anything. Well, when you ha you are in this stage, in a sense, in which you are facing, you are like in a small fish uh, or a very small boat with maybe 10, 15, 20 people, which are working at the core of the of the organization, and you are confronted to huge boats, which are states, which have huge uh, repressive uh, means of action, but which have also huge means of action in terms of disruption, of silent disruption, of invisible action also for the citizens and for the people you're confronted. And again, when you're just a, a, a young guy starting his life, well, you, you can feel a bit disturbed. And, and in a sense, I felt like, like if in this situation, I was one of you and suddenly someone put a spotlight on one of you, I don't know whom, and suddenly, one, it could be any of you, and suddenly you would be systematically exposed to, to me. You came here to watch us speak, and we've been prepared to do that speech as state actors are prepared to act when, uh, when they work even in secret services. They know they have uh, an apparatus of power behind them. They have mics, they have uh, uh, even water to drink, etc. I mean, they, 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 ha they are supported by uh, an apparatus. But suddenly, no, we reversed the situation. No, you, we, didn't came, we didn't come for that. We came for you. So one of you, we put the spotlight on you, and we ask you and we qu require you to talk. And you have no choice. You have to talk. And we are all here waiting for you to talk. No support, nothing else. This is what WikiLeaks does. It's a, an organization that entered into a world of, which is the world of espionage, of intelligence, without having the means to do so. So it, the idea was to reverse the, the question of transparency. Uh, we're in a system, we're in a world in which, because of these technological disruptions, uh, big data uh, has become a, a, a reality in which all of our informations, all of our lives are exposed and in the hands of states, but mainly of private actors, which have little to no control from sovereign actors and which are able to expose ourselves whenever they want, that, that is in the most dictatorial states, but otherwise can only, even in or the most democratic states like us, can only, are still able to gather information about us and use it privately, so without exposing them to the public, public scene, but still m uh, have this hold this information on us. And this huge power is a reversion of the normal political system from a li liberal point of view, which is that the state and private actors should have as little information as possible on us, only as much information as possible to uh, avoid the commission of violences or disruptions of the law, and only from a punctual point, uh, from, for a punctual time. If, if, if we change this paradigm, we put ourselves at a great risk of being unable to act politically or able to disrupt the system at a point in which we consider it is important to do so because we consider a rule is no longer uh, valuable or because we consider that our uh, uh, personal ethics should be in, in, in disruption with the, with the collective ethics. 
And this choice is very important because systems have, are moving and a system that one day is behaving generally in an ethical and in a common sense and a good, a good, good uh, sense perspective can very quickly switch. So the idea of Wikileaks was to reverse this obligation of transparency that was imposing itself progressively to all the citizens and which is not natural from a liberal perspective and try to impose to the states and to the apparatus of power, whether they, are pow whether they are public or private, this transparency for the citizens. And by doing so, there is a symbolic, a symbolic revenge, which is to say to these people who are in power only once to expo by exposing them, look, look what it does, look, look the effect it has on you, look how disruptive it is, look how violent this exposure that you consider natural, that Facebook, Google, etc., consider to be a normal thing of, the, of, of today's world, a necessity sometimes, look how violent actually it is. And it is violent, and the reactions of violence from these apparatus when they're exposed shows that it's not something that we should uh, stand and it's not something we should bear as citizens. So this is the overall, the overall perspective of Wikileaks. As you see the logo, I, I think this is something we, we've not thought enough. Uh, Julian Assange, I think, is one of the most uh, intelligent pe persons I, I've met. He has his the, the problems that come with too much intelligence, of course, but he's very smart. And this logo was elaborated almost since the beginning of the organization. And I think it's a very strong one because aside from the illustrative part of the leaking issue, what it is showing is a world that is dissolving and is recomposing itself completely. And I think, I think maybe it wasn't perceivable 10 years ago, but I think today it's very clear that all the structures that made the world understandable and clear and um, predi predictable are completely dissolving themselves and that you are facing the construction of a new space and of a new political, pol new political schemes. And we were talking just now about the, the idea of the sovereignty and how this idea is challenged by the current technological breakdowns. I think all these things are completely changing and are really changing in a, s in a way that is not predictable. And so the Wikileaks logo is both showing that Wikileaks is participating in this change in a very strong way and maybe uh, sometimes too strong way, but also that there is no prediction possible about the world that is coming. We can have guesses, we can try to participate in these breakdowns, but uh, the world that, w that is coming because of this leaking here, but in general because of these disruptions, is not a world we can uh, we, we can already uh, uh, we can already guess and uh, build. We can only part by part try to uh, to recompose it, but it will take a long time and it will take a lot of ruptures. And the interesting thing I think from is that we the, the forces today and the political games today are between people who are trying to resist this dissolution and trying to maintain the world as it was and preserve it and just have a conservative per perspective on it. And those who are trying to accompany it or even have free riding strategies, uh, which means that in this moment in which you're, you have holes opening everywhere in each political organization, in all the corporations, in all the structures of power, where you have a lot of free riders, some with good intentions, some with bad, who are trying to penetrate these holes and try to take something out of it. There are those with good intentions, activists, which were the main responsible for the first leaks. But then you have also malicious actors, uh, like states with uh, intentions, uh, with we can say uh, bad intentions, like Russia, for example, who are copying and very very quickly adapting to this new to this new era and trying to to use the tools that were at first used by 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 people with good intention to use it for their means. And that's something that we should always remember that technical, I mean, technical ruptures and, uh, and technical disruptions are never good or bad. They can be used in a, either in the good way or in the bad way. And WikiLeaks, in a sense, is a is a, an incarnation of that. Uh, WikiLeaks started by doing uh, uh, massive leaks using one of these holes in order to show uh, mass crimes, whether it was war crimes, crimes against humanity. And I would like to show again why. So we have all in our minds and in our memories what was Wikileaks at, uh, at the beginning and how it became someone kno something known. I would like to show again this video because it seems to me important in this moment in which the organization has been subject to such 
uh, attacks and such violent attacks to remember why uh, this organization was is still today important and what risks and what, what, why people that founded this organization and started it, uh, for what did they risk their lives? So this was the first time, it was not the first leaks of WikiLeaks at all, but it was the first time it, it, it uh, hit the news worldwide. I'm sure you remember them, but I, I'd like to show it again. More that keep walking by, and one of them has a weapon. Roger, receive target. Okay. Cool, oh, hey. See all those people standing down there? Uh, about there, one o'clock. 
Haven't seen anything since then. Just fucking, once you get on, just open them up. Yeah, Roger. Yeah. I, um, uh, I see your element. You got uh, well, about four Humvees uh, out along this. Uh, You're clear. All right, firing. Uh, line here with the state line. Uh, let me know when you have yeah, it. We'll shoot. Light them all up. Come on, fire. Yeah, Roger. on and uh, we have been a lot of jokes and uh, and lots about what just happened this is the reason why wikileaks members were prosecuted and a grand jury was uh, started against them and is still uh, hanging around their necks with potential life uh, time jail this is the reason why chelsea manning was condemned and is going to be freed uh, on the 17th so today uh, for having revealed these documents and the upcoming documents on the Iraq and Afghanistan wars and then the cable gate, which revealed thousands of crimes like this one. This is the only reason why WikiLeaks has been under such a pressure and their, the lives of their members have been at stake. This is why, and I really want to insist on that, in the, on the 18 last month, three people who worked in the defense team died either by suicide, either by... Uh, uh, diseases that appeared in an extreme quick way because they were harassed by authorities for doing their work. It comes from the most, uh, l the, the lesser grave uh, intimida intimidation proceedings, like the ones I suffered the day after I met Julian Assange, which is just signaling you that you have become someone who's under exposure, to much worse intimidation pressures and the one I received, for example, the day after I mentioned for the first time my uh, involvement with the WikiLeaks defense team, which was a meeting with uh, a person I had met a few months ago in, in, in the frame of an investigation in Central Africa, uh, who came back to me and said she needed to see me urgently in, the, in a coffee in, pa in, a, in, a, in a bar in Paris. And we met at the, at the, at the end of the, uh, at the back of the coffee, uh, of the coffee shop. And, uh, and she just, she had these huge uh, glasses, sunglasses, and she took them off. And she was all beaten up. And she said, you see, I talked. So this kind of pressure are today imposed to people who are only doing journalistic work or legal work in order to reveal crimes, corruption, <coughs> and violence. And I know there is a, I know there has been a lot of polemics th these last months about the turn WikiLeaks would have taken. What I see in this, in this period is first, the importance of these revelations and the importance of the, of the, of the fact of showing to, to people the reality of what is war, of what is state violence, and what powerful people would have interest in hiding. And this comes with mistakes, this comes with difficulties, and this comes sometimes with errors of judgment. That is for sure, because again, you are in a small boat which has means with 15 or 20 people, and you're confronted to others which have thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who are supporting this apparatus. The, the Pentagon itself, only, it only itself, has 10 times more people than the staff of WikiLeaks working full time on WikiLeaks in order to disrupt the organization and uh, uh, st stop it from making its publications. So let's come to maybe the, the last uh, events, and I won't go into detail with them, but the accusations that were ra raised against WikiLeaks on these issues. But for example, the question of the DNC leaks and then the Podesta emails uh, and the interferences that it has brought into the 
into the uh, U.S. elections, which are real. It is true that ha there has been in, in, uh, an interaction that has probably uh, created very negative impact into the democratic system in the U.S. But the question is, what was the role of WikiLeaks into these interactions? And there is a clear statement made by someone whose name is Barack Obama, who's theoretically not the biggest supporter of WikiLeaks, uh, who did a press conference a few days before he left office, in which he clearly distinguished the role of the what he said to be the Russian um, services that had uh, worked on taking the information from the DNC and Podesta by uh, entering into their email accounts and their systems, and WikiLeaks, who was just uh, an organization that was provided without knowing the source, and this has been said by Obama itself, from from these security uh, uh, intelligence services and probably intermediaries that were used by these intelligence services in order to, uh, to publish this information, which revealed uh, data that could, uh, that could be extremely important in future actions regarding the potential corruption around the, fund, uh, the Clinton Foundation, and which revealed factually a clear uh, disruption of the, of the democratic primaries, Democratic Party primaries, by the establishment of the party, which were informations that had a public interest. And I'm really confident <coughs> on the fact that the action of WikiLeaks was legitimate, whatever the purposes of the people that gave them this information was, because simply when you see that an information is used in a sense that is not uh, serving the public good, and I think we've seen it with the Macron leaks, for example, the, uh, of the name of the new president of France. I don't know if you follow this story, but three days before the elections, someone published on, the, on several websites a hacked uh, copy of the emails of his main advisors, but there was no information that had any kind of public interest into it. It was just normal uh, organization of the campaign, as for example were the Sony leaks. In the Sony leaks, there was no uh, uh, there was no sign of corruption or whatsoever. And in these two cases, what happened was, of course, a disruption, a, a, a temporary disruption for both apparatus of power. Sony, for example, was for a few days enabled to work uh, on, on, on uh, as it should be. But in the long term, there, are n there were no negative consequences or in the organization because the, the organization themselves were healthy and there was nothing to be revealed in these organizations that were... Uh, uh, scandalous in any, in any way. So the extreme right, for example, on the Macron leaks, tried to forge documents to, to, uh, to work on this, uh, on this case, to try to influence the elections at the last moment. It tried to use it in order to create a lot of propaganda on the fact uh, Macron would be corrupted, etc. But it didn't work because simply there was no, there was no, uh, there was no real information uh, uh, revealing any scandal in it. So what, what would happen though, and I think that's why WikiLeaks will be remembered for decades, will be that these informations, whether they are Sony leaks or others, will remain in the databases of WikiLeaks in a searchable way and will allow citizens, researchers, uh, lawyers to understand how our world worked today and how these huge corporations, huge apparatus of powers, uh, were from the inside, from their inner workings, uh, sociologically uh, built in a sense. And this will give a huge value actually for the, I think the long-term value of WikiLeaks, more than the mediatic or even the political role of it, will be the one of a huge encyclopedia of powers that will, I hope, uh, survive and that will allow us to understand how the world works in the long term. So, a last word maybe wi of before course. I conclude. I think WikiLeaks is a natural result of this word. I think it's a free rider, uh, as many other free riders have uh, been born in, in this situation in which Again, apparatus of powers were filled with holes because of these technological, technological disruptions. So I don't think we should essentialize, neither in good, neither in bad, what WikiLeaks is. It's just an organization of citizens that at some point, point saw the holes, had anticipated them, and this is, a, of course, linked to the, to the knowledge of Julian and maybe his intelligence also, and was able to be the first to enter into this game. But very quickly, as we saw, apparatus with much more power, like states, entered into the same game, saw the inter in interest in trying to manipulate it, and, and have now taken the floor and will progressively take more and more importance. So we, we shouldn't be, I think, more than judging, we should understand why these 
new organizations and these new practices have been raising and how we should adapt our behaviors towards them. And I think Macron, for example, had a very smart move against it. It was yeah, he saw he was exposed and vulnerable because he saw that Russia was attacking it because they considered it that uh, the main adversary to the Front National. They considered him the main adversary to the Front National. So he first decided to make the campaign in which there was no uh, mispractice in any way to make sure that he would not be exposed. He then used separate channels of communication for the lighter and less important exchanges. He used. Gmails and normal email accounts. For the more secured, he went to uh, secured uh, uh, conversation applications like Telegram and so forth. And so he created a system in which he had not to uh, he he had not to impose to all of his staff uh, the same security patterns because he knew it was impossible. He knew he would lose too much energy and force. And on the other hand, he knew he, the most important secrets of his campaign would be protected from malicious actors. So that would be the only advice I would have to you, to try to have a very uh, progressive and uh, progressive system in which you have several kinds of layers and not only a an overall structured pattern. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>